Well, Happy New Year and welcome to The Rock's online service. This is a great way to start out the new year and we're so glad you're here. We have an amazing service for you today. But before we go any farther, we have a huge favor to ask of every single one of you. And yes, that includes you. Would you please text the word The Rock to the number 88202, click the link and fill out our brief online welcome card. It takes less than 30 seconds and it really helps us keep up with our family. So again, text The Rock to 88202, click the link and fill out the form. And if every one of you do that, that'd be a huge blessing. And now let's prepare our hearts to worship together. Come on, let's sing together. This is the day that you and me, whatever comes, I won't complain for all my own is in your name and now your joy awaits my praise i give thanks for all you have done and i will sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing lord i am grateful oh lord we give you thanks for all that you've done and what you will continue to do, Lord. Come on, let's sing. When I was down, you brought me out and set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand. You are my God. Your faithfulness, my solid rock. Oh, we give thanks, Lord. I give thanks for all you have done and I will sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing Lord I am grateful I give thanks for all you have done I won't forget all the battles you have won your love is unfailing Lord I am grateful together as we lift our hands and as we lift our hands the heavens open heavens open so let our lives declare the love our God has spoken come on let's lift up our hands and say and as we lift our hands the heavens open Heaven's open, so let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. He has spoken over us. sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing lord i am grateful i give thanks for all you have done i won't forget all the battles you have won your love is unfailing lord i am grateful We praise your name, Lord. You are our rock, our solid foundation. And we trust in you. We put our hope and faith in you, God. And that's why today we can sing this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. My rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, let's 
Let's sing that again. Praise His name. Oh, we sing the Praise the
Our Savior is no longer a babe in a manger, but he is indeed the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the bright and morning star. It's to him that we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. But yet, despite all that authority, despite all of that power, he still says, come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden and he says that I will give you rest as we start the year 2021 let's start it in his rest let's start it in his promises let's start it knowing that he's for us and not against us and if God is for us then who can be against us let's cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us let's cry out holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God, everlasting Father, but also the Prince of Peace. And if this nation and if this world needs anything else, it needs peace. So let's invite the Prince of Peace. Have your way in our lives individually, Lord. Have your way in the life of our church. Have your way in the life of churches. Have your way in the life of this nation. As we pray this and believe it all, in the mighty name of Jesus. And could all of God's people say, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. At this time, we want to honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings. As many of you already know, The Rock is a tithing church we're also a missions giving church and we believe that everyone can give something to missions at least once a month and we encourage you to do that and i do need to thank our congregation want to thank you for your obedience unto the lord and for your faithfulness to partner with us the rock and giving of your tithes and offerings we thank you for it and because of you we have been able to reach many people that are in need but also to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, we're starting a new year, but I'm reminded of something that the Apostle Paul said to the, those who were part of the church at Ephesus. This was his last missionary journey. He was returning and he, he had spent a lot of time with those that were in Ephesus, but he couldn't spend time with them now. So he met them at a place to, to give them some parting words. And one of the things he told them to do in the book of Acts in chapter number 20 and verse number 35, he says, and remember, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, that is Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I encourage all of us as we start the year 2021, let's remember that the apostle Paul said, remember what Jesus said, and Jesus said it is more blessed to give that it is to receive. And as we prepare to give, I just want to take a few moments and we'll watch a short video that will just let us know how you can give today here at The Rock. God bless you. Giving is now easier with The Rock app. You can download it in your app store by searching Go to The Rock. Once you're in the app, click Give at the bottom of the page. Select your house church, congregation, or general giving and complete your giving details. Of course, you can always mail in your offering or hand deliver it to our church offices. You can also give on our website, go to therock.com by clicking on give. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing and helping us reach as many people as possible with God's love. Oh 
in our nations, in our ministries, in our assignments. So we come, Lord, we bless you this year. We honor you and we pray that you would speak to us even today through your precious word. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Wherever you are, you may be in a house church or you may just be by yourself. But just mutter some blessing to the Lord and say, Lord, I give you this year. You may have already done it before. But let me tell you, this whole week, this whole month, we're saying, Lord, this is your year to do what you want to do. Praise God. Well, thank God for his word. And we want to make sure to hold up our Bibles in just a minute and make a declaration. But just before we do, let me share with you a few things that I think are important. First of all, this month, the month of January, is the only month where we get to set the pattern of what God wants to do for this year. And so I want to encourage you that even if over the New Year's holiday, Christmas holiday, New Year's holiday, if you have not been able to have some time and establish some kind of a pattern and get your sights set on what the Lord wants to do this year, then ask the Lord to help you to carve some time out and to do that it's so, so important. And let me tell you what God has going this year in this ministry. Let me tell you, it's going to be powerful. And last year, you know, it was so last year. And uh, how many times was it said, this is a different year. This is crazy. These are strange times, unprecedented times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is a new year. This is a year where, OK, we've been through COVID and all of that still dealing with all of that. But let me tell you, this year we're taking this in the spirit and we're setting our sights on the power of God, the will of God, the blessing of God, the promises of God. And we're saying, Lord, you are Lord. You are God of gods and you have something for me. And so I want to encourage you to stay connected with us in this ministry, to be on your game spiritually and just carve out that time every day, every week 
to attend to the things of the Spirit and then watch what the Lord does. Watch what the Lord does. So now if you have a Bible, I want you to grab it right now. We always like to remind ourselves that we have a gift from the Lord besides Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all of the blessings of just living in this earth, on this earth. We have this great gift where God gave us a book. He gave us words, eternal words that continue to speak to us time and again. So Let's uh, raise up our Bibles and let's declare it. It's right there on your screens. Let's say it together. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. All right, if you have your Bible, I want you to open up to a couple of places. Find, if you would, the 19th chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 19, and then also, if you'll hold your place in Ephesians chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 19 and Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to adjust these little zippers on my wrist so they don't continue to bang on this metal lectern that I have here. All right, here we go. Proverbs chapter 19, and here's the title of this message today. Start the year off right. Start the year off right. This is the only opportunity we have to start the year off right. And as I prayed and I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want to say? The Lord wanted to talk to us about getting postured, getting positioned. You know, it's like an, an airplane getting on the runway and, and lined up. You know, they get that plane just lined up and you see the, that dotted line going down the center of that runway and the plane gets lined up because once they hit that throttle, and that thing gets cooking, they don't want to veer off that runway. They need to stay right on the runway. Why? Because they're about to take off. And the Lord is saying, I need to get my people on the runway. I need to get them lined up and I need to get them positioned because I'm going to hit the throttle and I'm going to begin to launch them into what I have for them for this year. So we're going to be talking here about starting the year off right. Now, so many people, you know, they make the New Year's resolutions and then they don't keep the New Year's resolutions and then people make fun of them because they don't meet their New Year's resolutions throughout the year and such. And so some people would say, hey, why don't we just make resolutions that we can keep? Like uh, this year, I'm going to gain 20 pounds and double my debt or something like that. Well, you know, those are funny. I mean, they're jokes and such. But let me tell you, it is not only possible, but it is the will of God that we hear from him and set our sights on what he wants us to accomplish this year. And let me tell you, you're not on your own. So you don't have to say, well, man, I'm just going through so much right now. I've got so many things. I don't think I can take on anything else. Don't you buy into that. This is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God is telling you, look, you don't have to supply all of the energy, all of the wisdom, all of the resources to do what I've called you to do. I will supply all of that to you. But what I need you to do is to hear my voice, to discern what I'm saying and to agree to it, to obey and to set your sights on what I want to do in your life. And if you'll open yourself to me, I will come in and I will strengthen you and I will solve problems, and I will resource you. I will bless you. I'll open doors that no one could open for you. See, boy, the Lord's already speaking here in this message. We haven't even read the scriptures yet, but God's already speaking. And the Lord's saying, I've got you, but I need you not to accept the cowardice that the enemy wants you to accept and to cower back from my assignment. No, the Lord says, trust me. Lean into me. I will be your strength. I will be your protector. I will be your victory. And so thank God. You know, I think of the scripture in 1 John 5, 4, where it says, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. God says, trust me, believe me, and you will have victory this year. Oh, thank God. That's a powerful word already. All right, I want to get into this now. I want to read first from Proverbs, the 19th chapter and the 21st verse. Proverbs 19, 21. And I have loved this verse since I was a young man. But here's what it says. 
It says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, in other words, people think a lot of things. People aspire to do, to have, to become a lot of things. But the Bible says, nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. In other words, okay, so we all have many things. You know, if you hang around people that really are into boats, well, then you'll begin to develop a desire for a boat. If you hang around people that really are into the latest kind of car, uh, automobiles, they're always talking about it. You're hanging around with them and looking at their cars and such. Well, before you know it, you'll be desiring cars. There are many plans in a man's heart. And I'm not saying it's bad to have a boat or a car. What I am saying is the Lord's plan for you is established. The Lord's plan for you is settled. The Lord's plan for you is powerful. And if we can discern his plan and get on course with him, then we'll have the backing of God, the power, the wisdom, the resource, the blessing, the favor of God, and we'll please him by pursuing that. And that's what God wants us, to, wants us to do. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Let me read it to you from the English Standard Version. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. And that's what's going to stand. And that's what we need to pursue. God already has a plan. I, I just want to establish that to you from Scripture. We're not asking God, Lord, I need to know what uh, the plan is. Lord, come up with a plan. No, God already has a plan. Listen to Jeremiah 29, 11. It's one of the most beloved verses in the entire Bible. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Notice God says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I know the plans. You know, when I read that, I hear God saying this. You think you know the plans that I have for you, but you don't know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. And he goes on to say, they're plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I'm not trying to give you a bad life. I'm not trying to do things detrimental to you. I want to prosper you. I want to bless you. And he goes on to say, I want to give you hope and I want to give you a future. God says, look, I know what I have for you. So what is he indicating there? God is indicating you need to come to me. You need to ask me. You need to seek me to find out what my plans are because you don't know my plans. And other people that say they may know my plans for you, they don't know my plans for you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That reminds me of Ephesians 2.10, where the Bible says, for we are his workmanship. In other words, he created us. He's been working on us. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Watch this. For good works, which God prepared beforehand. We were created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has already prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Notice the word should. See, a lot of people have the misconception that the will of God will always come to pass. Well, there are certain things about the will of God that will come to pass. But let me just tell you right now, God's will for most human beings will not come to pass because God has not kept or retained the authority and the decision making for their lives. God has distributed to every human being the right to choose whether or not they're going to go with God's plans or whether they're going to go with their own plans or somebody else's plans. No, the Bible says we should walk in them. God has already prepared the plans for our lives and we're now supposed to seek him and walk in those plans. And let me just declare this, because this goes right along with it. The plans are already finished. God is not writing them as we go along. The plans were finished. Listen to Hebrews chapter 4 in the third verse. God was talking about the first generation of Israelites that came out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And he wanted to take them into the promised land, but they refused to believe him. 
They refuse to obey him. They continue to complain about the wilderness and what's not happening. This is not happening. Why, why isn't this happening? Why didn't God do this? And why doesn't God do that? And they complained and God was trying to explain to them, I'm taking you to the promised land. You're not there yet. You're in the wilderness. But I'm taking you there. Yeah, but why this and why that? Complaining, complaining, and complaining. Instead of trusting God, instead of believing God, instead of thanking God that he's taking them to the promised land, they complained that it wasn't already like the Garden of Eden, already like the promised land to come. And so in Hebrews chapter four, God is commenting now through the writer of Hebrews about what happened with that first generation because that first generation did not make it into the promised land, even though it was God's will. It was the second generation that Joshua took into the promised land, if you'll remember. But listen to what God says in Hebrews chapter four about that, the third verse. He said, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Listen to that. I swore that they're not going to enter my rest. He's talking about entering into the promised land where he's going to give them rest from their enemies. And so he says, I swore because they disbelieved me, they complained, and this happened over and over and over. In fact, in one passage, God said it happened 10 times now. 10 times you let me know very clearly we should have never listened to God. We should have never left Egypt. We should have stayed in bondage in Egypt. It would have been better than to be out here with, in the wilderness on this journey to the promised land. God said, that's the 10th time that you've done that to me. And so now... Uh, I wanted to take you into the promised land, but I'm not going to take you into the promised land. I'm swearing to you now. I swore to take the, the descendants of Abraham in, but now I'm swearing to you that I'm not taking you in because of your attitude, because of your uh, ingratitude, because of your complaining, because of your disobedience. I'm not taking you in. But he said, but I'll take your children in because I swore to Abraham that I would take his descendants in. I wanted it to be you, but it now will not be you. I swear it will not be you, but I will take your children in. So notice God says, so I swore in my wrath. I was angry with that generation. They shall not enter my rest. Watch this. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That little phrase is often overlooked, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. What does that mean? God said, from the foundation of the world, when I created the earth and when I foresaw the whole future and I, I wrote all the plans, I believe it happened before God rested on the seventh day. He completed all the works. And this passage, if you study it out, it's, it shows that. That before God rested on the seventh day, He created everything in six days, but he not only created the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and all of those things, but God also designed all the plans for your life and my life. He saw the future. God's outside of time. And he completed all the plans. And so what God is saying here is, oh no, I completed everything I needed to complete for that first generation out of Egypt to go into the promised land. But they were not willing. Do you remember Ephesians 2.10? We're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Well, that first generation didn't. They should have, but they didn't. God said the plans were ready. I rolled out the red carpet for you to walk in, but you allowed the enemy to attack your mind and began to complain and were ungrateful. And because of that, you did not have your heart in alignment with my plans. You weren't grateful that I was bringing you somewhere. I was working on something for you. And so because of that, even though I rolled out the red carpet, even though from the foundation of the world, I prepared for you to go in and to take that promised land and then to set your children up for success. God says, no, you were not willing. I was willing. I prepared it. You were not willing. So we have to understand the plans for your life are already complete. God has already finished the plans. And all we need to do is discover these plans and to walk in these plans, trusting Him and not complaining and not being distracted with other plans. People will project other plans on you. I can't tell you how many people have done this to me. I remember when I first got out of high school, and you know, when you graduate from high school, people start asking, hey, what are you going to do? You're going to go to college? 
You're going to get a job. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And you know what? That pressure begins to come. And then people start to tell you, if you don't have a good answer, people tell you, you know what you should do? And people started telling me, you should go into computers. You should go into computers. And this was back, I graduated high school in 1982. So they said, oh man, computers are really coming on. Personal computers had not really exploded yet, but it was a, a really, it was at the beginning of the explosion, I should say. And they said, you know what? There are a lot of people going into programming computers, but there aren't enough people that are computer technicians to be able to repair computers. You should become a computer technician. You make a lot of money, right? So guess what? I go to college and I began to study to prepare myself to become a computer technician. Why? Because somebody else told me, listen, if you don't know what God has called you to do, somebody else will tell you what God has called you to do. In fact, they'll tell you even if you know. But they projected that on me. Well, I got in there, man, I'm telling you, I'm watching this teacher put up zeros and ones, zeros and ones. And I'm thinking, man, this guy can't even count above one. You know, why am I going to listen to him? Of course, that, there was uh, some computer uh, programming behind all of that. But I just knew inside, this is not for me. So I quit. And I went back the next semester and somehow I got the idea I'm going to become a paramedic. That's a noble profession. I mean, that's something that people respect. And, you know, the, uh, they've got hours where, you know, you work really hard for a number of hours then, or, or days and then you have some days off. But it's, it's respected and you can make decent money and so on. See, I wasn't thinking right. I'm thinking about what's respected. I'm thinking about uh, time and schedule. I'm thinking about money. That's not how you find out what you're called to do. No, you have to seek God. You have to seek God. And all this time, really, I was seeking God, but I don't think I was ready for God to tell me the plan yet. But I dropped out of college a second time, and of course people say, oh, you're, you're a quitter. What's wrong? Well, you got to stick with it and such. But I just knew that's not what I'm called to do. I needed to know what God had called me to do. And over that time, as I continued to press in, I would go into my closet. I had a big closet and I would seek God and call out to him and pray and say, Lord, please tell me what you want me to do. You have something for me. I don't know what it is. And it was during that time, not all in one session with God, but it was over that course of time that I realized I'm called to teach God's word. I'm called to minister to people. I'm called to, and of course, my life was being radically changed that year by the word of God, being delivered from bondages, addictions, fear, insecurity. God was radically changing my life. And he made known to me that this is what I'm called to do, to do what I'm doing right now, to open this book and to show people how God speaks to us so that we can be changed so that we can realize the assignments, the callings that are on our lives. See, and so this is what happened to me. These plans were already finished for me, but I didn't know what the plans were. And when you don't know, people will start telling you. No, you have to seek God and you have to find out what his plans are. His plans are non-negotiable because they're already finished. They were finished, the Bible says, from the foundation of the world. So our job is really to discover his plans, not to get God to make plans. Our job is really to discover God's plans. Listen to Proverbs 25, 2. It is God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. Listen again. It is God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. Well, what is God doing? Playing some you know, divine game of hide and seek? No, God doesn't want us just to do the plan. He wants us to do the plan with him because his plans require his power, his wisdom, his resources, his connections. And so he knows if we just know what the plans are and we go and we try to accomplish them in our own strength, in our own wisdom, with our own resources, God knows there's no way we can do it. We have been given a supernatural plan. And so God wants us to come to him and discover the plan and then to allow him to work this plan with us. In other words, he wants relationship with you. He wants relationship with me. He wants to partner together. Isn't that a privilege? The creator of the universe wants to partner with you. 
He wants to be that close. He wants to be in fellowship, in communication, in partnership day after day. What an honor. What a privilege this is. But this is what he wants. It is God's privilege to conceal things. Why? So that we, the, the New Testament says, we are kings and priests unto the Lord our God. <laughs> and so it is the king's privilege to discover them. So the king seeks God, pursues God, asks God, and guess what? God allows the king to discover his ancient plans that have all been prepared for the king. And that king is you. That queen is you. In Ephesians 5.10, the Bible says, find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what pleases the Lord. Somebody said, I don't know what to do. Find out. You have to pursue. You have to pursue. I remember when I had met Kimberly, oh, I had sought God for the right wife. Lord, I, I don't want to marry the wrong person. I want to marry the right person. And I know some people would say, I just want to marry anybody. Well, no, don't be like that. God knows exactly who, where they are, and how it'll all come to, to be. And so I was praying, Lord, I want to I want to have the right person. And I remember I met Kimberly and I was seeking God. Lord, is could this be the person and such? And because I became so fond of her, how she was, her heart and such. And I thought she was pretty, too. Well, let me tell you, I wanted her. I, I got to the place where I wanted her to be the one. Well, she wasn't the first one that I wanted to be the one. But God has said no to the others. And so I said, Lord, is this is this the person? Could this be the person? Of course, I didn't even know if she'd want me to be the one for her. But I was seeking God. And let me tell you this. During that time, I just kept getting green lights from the Lord to continue to pursue that relationship. Well, guess what? That's exactly what I did. I would call her. Back then, we didn't have text messaging. We didn't have any email or anything. Actually, we did have email, but not everybody was using that for social uh, conversation. And so I remember that I would call and I would go down, drive down to Long Beach. I lived in El Monte, California. She lived in Long Beach, California. And I would drive down there. I would ask her to go out on dates and such. And what was I doing? I was pursuing her. And the more I would call and pursue her because she did like me as well, well, the more it made her feel good. It made her feel esteemed, made her feel valued, made her feel loved. And you know what the Lord wants? The Lord already pursued us. He created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. When we sinned, he sent his son and sacrificed his only begotten son that he might purchase the opportunity to be in relationship with us. God has been pursuing us long before we were born. And so now it's our turn to pursue him. And the more we pursue him, the more he feels valued to us. The more he feels important to us. The more he feels like we really want the relationship that he wants to have with us. This is what God is asking. He's saying, seek me, pursue me. Find out what pleases me. Don't just say, well, if God has something to say, well, I guess he'll say it. No, the Lord is saying, ask, ask me. Ask me. And so how do we pursue the will of God? How do we find out what the will of God is? Well, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me. God says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me. God is saying, ask me. You're so busy and preoccupied with other things in life. But am I not the most important to you? Am I not the most helpful to you? Am I not the one that can solve all the problems? Am I not the one that can restore those things that have been damaged or stolen? I am the one who can do that. Call to me. You're asking everybody else. You're Googling. But God says, call to me and I will answer you. Don't you love that promise? I will answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God says, the plans that I have for you are great plans. The plans that I have for you are mighty plans. They're extravagant. God does not have some second-rate plan for your life. His plan is extraordinary. His plan is supernatural. And God says, if you'll call to me, I will answer you. Let me tell you, because he promised that, 
if you will call to him with a sincere heart and pursue him, he cannot not answer. He can't not answer. He is responsible to answer. He is required to answer. Somebody said, what requires him? It's not us. We can't twist God's arm and make him answer us. No, he's responsible and required by his own promise because God cannot lie. He obligated himself through his word, through his promises. That's why we always come back to the word of God when we want to know what the Lord is saying. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. James 1.5 says, If any of you need wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. God is generous and won't correct you for asking. If any of you need wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. Notice there's no hint of possibility there. It is absolute. It will be given to you and God is generous. He'll give you a generous amount of wisdom. You remember Jesus said in John 15, 5, without me you can do nothing. See, we cannot accomplish the plan for our lives without him. Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And now let me get to this and this is really a foundational passage for us. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, whoever comes to me, number one, and hears my sayings, number two, and that's what we're doing today. We're hearing his sayings, the word of God. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, and third, does them. I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Now that's hard work. People don't like to dig People like to just do it the easy way, but the Lord says, listen, if you'll do it my way, if you'll come to me, if you'll hear what I'm saying, and if you'll do them, do those things I'm saying. You're like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, not if, when the flood arose, floods always arise, problems in life always come. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently, violently against that house and could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. What's the rock? The rock is doing what God says to you. He always knows the future. He always knows what to do. And so if you seek him and you pursue him and you'll be established on the rock and when the storms come, oh, God knew those storms were coming. That's why he told you to do what he told you to do. And so you're in the right place at the right time. But notice verse 49. But he who heard and did nothing. So notice, here's a person that came and heard, but they didn't follow through to do it. He who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. He's talking about people. He's talking about people really in this passage who maybe come to church, come and they hear the word of God, but they don't follow through with what God is telling them to do. And he said those people are not only vulnerable, it is inevitable that those people, their lives are going to crumble because they refuse to follow the plan of God. They refuse. And these are people that even heard it. So we have to come to Jesus. We have to hear what he's saying and we have to do it. Let me close with a few secrets. A few secrets. Establish a pattern of reading your Bible every day. We've been saying this for years. We read our Bibles every day. Establish a pattern of reading your Bible every day. In Proverbs 4.20, the Bible says, My son, give attention to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. That's through the 22nd verse. So God says, give me your attention. Give my words your attention. I love what Job said in Job 23, 12. He said, I have treasured the words of his mouth, God's mouth, more than my necessary food. And this is important. We, every one of us crave to eat. But God says, I want you to crave to hear me. Crave to feed on my word. You remember Jesus said, he quoted from Deuteronomy, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We have our Bible reading plans. If you haven't already started them, I want to encourage you. Get on the app. Get on our app and the Bible reading plans are there. And pick one of the Bible reading plans and let's read our Bibles every day. Here's a second, second secret. And that is ask God to teach you to pray without ceasing. 
God wants a regular conversation with him, not just an occasional time where we go and now we're talking to God, but the rest of the day, the rest of the week, we don't talk to him. No, ask God, say, Lord, help me to be conversational with you, to be praying without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18 say, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we should be giving God thanks here and there for things that happen. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me there. Thank you, Lord, that that didn't go wrong. Lord, thank you for helping me get this resolved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Bible says that's the will of God and it's part of praying without ceasing. And Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. So God is saying, look, if you want me to do a lot for you, ask, ask me, seek me, talk to me and I'll do it. And then here's a third secret. Write down what God says. Write down what God says. So first secret is establish a pattern of reading your Bible every day. Second, ask God to help you to pray without ceasing. Third, write what God says to you. Habakkuk 2.2, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. There's something powerful about writing down what God speaks to you. It also shows value that I think it's so important what you're saying, God, that I'm going to write it down. And then the last secret I want to share is pursue it consistently with all your might. I love this verse in Ecclesiastes that says in the 10th verse, the 9th chapter, whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. In other words, we have this shot right now. We have this chance right now to do things well. So when God speaks, when we write it down, then let's pursue it with all of our minds. I like to spend time at the end of a year or at the beginning of a year laying out the various roles that God has called me to. Like I'm a pastor, I'm a husband, I'm a father, etc. cetera. The, the roles, not just the roles I've been doing, but the roles that God has called me to in this coming season. And then to say, Lord, share with me what you want me to do in those roles. What, what do you want me to accomplish? Sometimes we call them roles and goals. Lord, what is the goal for that role? What, what are you asking of me? What is my assignment in that role? And let me just share this too. Last season's routine is an enemy of this season's assignments. Last season's routine is an enemy to this season's assignments. We must set the new routine of being with the Lord, seeking God and pursuing what he says because last seasons cannot accomplish this season's assignments. So let's set new routines. Let's set new patterns and habits in our lives. A new schedule of when we get up, what we do, how we pursue God so we can accomplish what God wants us to accomplish this year. And I want to pray over you as we end. And those of you that have not made Jesus the Lord of your life or you need to renew that commitment, I pray that you'll do it right now and say, Jesus, I'm committing my life to you. I put my faith in you. You died on the cross for me to pay for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me. And I commit myself to follow you for the rest of my life. And let me tell you, by putting your faith in the Lord like that, the Bible says you'll be born again, you'll be saved. But of course, now we need to follow through with that. So let's pray right now. Everybody, maybe put your hands out in front of you. We're presenting this year to the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm giving you 2021. Come, have your way, Lord. Do what you want to do. I seek you. I, I begin seeking you passionately right now. Come on, let's pray. Father, I've come in the name of Jesus and I pray for every person. Oh Lord, the plan that you have for them is extravagant. It's significant. It's supernatural. And not only that, it's important. It's essential. It's vital. It's going to impact many other people. Oh Lord, I pray that the value of your plan for this person's life. Lord, I pray that that value would rise to a high level in their own hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that you would motivate them, incentivize them, strengthen them to seek you, to discover your plans, to set a pattern of hearing your voice, of writing down what you're saying. And then, Lord, I ask you to strengthen them to pursue it, 
to pursue it with all of their might. Lord, according to your word. And Lord, for all of us, we ask you to forgive us for being distracted, for not pursuing you as we ought. And we pray that you would strengthen us this year to do it the way that you want us to do it. That we may please you, that we may honor you, Lord, and that we may fulfill the assignments that you have prepared long ago for each of our lives. I pray it today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give all the praise and the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let me just say to all of you right now that we're so proud to be connected to you. I don't know how God connected each of you with us and us with you, but he did. And we're so proud of this connection. And I want to ask you that we just set our sights on partnering together this year to pursue the will of God together. And let's strengthen one another. Let's, let's lean into this partnership. And let's allow God through not only me and you, but through us to accomplish something powerful in this earth, in our nation, this year. We pray it in Jesus' name. I bless you today. I thank God for this new year. I thank God for you. And I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. Well, what a fantastic word that was from the Lord. We need God's direction as we enter into this new year so that we can follow what it is that he's saying. I want to encourage you, if you want to read the Bible daily with us, download our Go to the Rock app by going to your app store and just typing the word Go to the Rock. It's all one word. Type that in, download our free app, and you can keep up with us every single day reading the word. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you, and we will see you next week.